Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alfonso Peluso, a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, and I'm coming to you live from Crown Hall, the space of Mies van der Rohe. So today we're going to look at using Grasshopper to manipulate a surface. And what I have in Rhino is an example of what our end result will be in Grasshopper. So I just want to go through and do this in Rhino first. I find it helpful when learning Grasshopper to do something in Rhino and then try to do the same thing in Grasshopper. It's not always a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning the same commands that you do in Rhino aren't always the same in Grasshopper, but it's a good start. So I'm going to take this surface in Rhino and I'm going to rebuild it. And what rebuilding does is it allows me to have some points that I can manipulate. And for right now, we're going to set up the point count and the U and the V to 6 and 6. And we're going to use a degree of 2. Now, degree, when manipulating surface, is, is very important. And that's something that I'm going to get to in some future videos. Now, I can use the points on command, or I can use the shortcut F10 to access those points. And I'm just simply going to click on a point, and then I'm going to lift or lower that point. And... Uh, my gumball at the bottom of my screen is turned on, so that's allowing me to, to raise or lower these points in the Z direction. Okay, so we'll do the same thing in Grasshopper. Okay, so let's bring this surface into Grasshopper. So I'm going to do that by choosing a surface container. And I'll just right click and set one surface. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the surface in Rhino so that we can see this a little bit better in Grasshopper. Okay, so the next thing that we did in Rhino is we rebuilt the surface. So I'm just going to double click and type in rebuild surface. Now, this rebuild surface capsule is from a plugin called Lunchbox. It's a free plugin that you can find on Food for Rhino. It's brought to us from the great people over at the Proving Ground. They do a lot of, uh, co they create a lot of computational design tools. So give them a, a, a quick shout out to the Proving Ground. Okay, so let's let's uh, set this surface and rebuild it the same way that we rebuilt it in Rhino. So we're going to use a degree of two. And then our point counts, those were six. Now to see the points, we're going to use uh, surface points. OK, so there we have the points. Now we're going to have to call those points out. And the way that we're going to do that today is through a list item. There's a lot of ways to do that. And in some future tutorials, we'll look at other ways to doing it. But right now, we'll use list item. And we need, to, we need to know how the points are numbered in a list. So we're going to use a point list. And we're going to set the size of that text. We'll set it to 1. Okay, so now we can see those points over in Rhino. So I'll start by lift, lifting point number five. Okay, so I'm just going to use a list item. And I'll plug my list of points into the list item. So you see I'm, I'm always moving these capsules around. I do this when I'm teaching because I don't like when the wires go behind capsules because it makes it hard for the person uh, you know, watching the tutorial to, to figure out what's being plugged into what. And uh, OK, so I'm going to use my index number 5. So you see that's cal calling out point number 5. And we're going to lift that point. We're going to lift it using a point to form. Okay, and the point to form it has three inputs: the geometry that we're going to deform, the points that we're going to lift, and then the direction that we're going to lift them in. Now, it's important that the geometry that we deform that that is the rebuilt surface. 
uh, many times I'll end up plugging in the original surface and then look at it wondering why it's not deforming so just if you run into that make sure you plug the rebuilt surface into the point to form okay so the um, so here you see that the challenge in trying to get all the wires showing so I'll just move some stuff around a little bit okay so the item or point that we're deforming is coming from this list item and the direction that we're gonna lift it is going to be in the Z direction so you see that point starting to lift already and we can increase the amount that it's going to lift by default that is set to 1 so we'll add a number slider and lower that down now this point to form what it's looking for is it's looking for um, a, a vector to lift it in and how far we want to lift it for each point so for example if I add more points so let's say uh, point number 14 so if I bring out a number slider and I plug point number 14 into this index that's going to immediately turn that point to form red because it needs another number slider and Z vector to be plugged into it so let's go ahead and add that and uh, let's you see that so that's what's happening there and let's let's do one more point that we're going to actually lower instead of lifting so let's uh, let's take point number 30 here so I'm gonna use a number slider and go ahead and plug that in and we'll need another number slider and unit vector okay so now this one I mentioned I want to I want to lower it uh, instead of lifting it so what I can do is I can add a negative I'm just going to put that in between the number slider and the Z vector. You see that's going to that's going to lower that point. Okay, so let's let's bake this into Rhino so that we can see the geometry. Okay, so there you see that. I'm just going to turn off turn off all these all these capsules for a moment okay so now we can see we can see that geometry in Rhino and it looks very you know it looks almost identical to the one that we did at the beginning in Rhino okay so I, I hope you find this tutorial helpful um, if you uh, if you'd like subscribe to my channel you'll see my my face pop up in the upper left you can you can click on that uh, also, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and see what I'm up to and see what tutorials I'm, I'm planning on putting out in the future. Also, leave some comments below on what types of tutorials you would like to see. I plan on putting these out uh, you know, about once a week. So I hope you enjoy. See you next time.